This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Trigun Badlands Rumble from Funimation. We should probably have gotten a girl to come here for this. No, no, we'll be all right. We'll be good. You don't say anything stupid. Welcome to iFanboy, the comic book discussion show from the website iFanboy.com. I'm Josh Flanagan. I'm Connor Kilpatrick. And I'm Ron Richards. And recently in the comics sphere, uh, the topic of... Comicsosphere? The comicsosphere. I don't want to say blogosphere. Uh, the topic of uh, women in comics, uh, not the characters themselves, but the creators themselves has come it's a, up. It's a hot button issue. It's been a hot button issue, uh, mainly in some Did of I the... say that? <laughs> See, we're not even a minute in, and um, and it was you. It wasn't even me. I'm married, <laughs> but um, I know with some of the, with some of the recent announcements by DC and the the kind of staffing choices they made that triggered some criticism. I think that's safe to say discussion. some discussion. Yeah, some criticism depending on yeah. And um, so okay, happened. so here's the thing. <laughs> so we were like, we should talk about this, and then we also had the discussion. We're just three dudes, and are we allowed to talk about it? So it gets dicey. We're gonna we're gonna do our best to talk about it in a non patronizing way. I'm gonna make dumb jokes. And, I can't help it. And we're not and we're not gonna touch the, some of the stuff that I think every that was adequately addressed what was going on in DC and some of the criticisms and all that sort of stuff. I don't touch that temple. We're not here to call out sexism. Exactly. No. Rather, we you know, the thing is, is that I kind of laughed when it all came up because it was like, oh, women in comics, is enough, you know. There are a lot of women working in comics, and there are a lot of women who do great work, and there's been a long legacy going back to the golden age of women working in comics. There, and so, there, you know, there are also a lot of dudes. Yeah, it's there a very, are mostly, mostly dudes. They're mostly dudes, yeah. And that's... Who knows why that is? Maybe there's... Well, a- I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's mostly dudes. It's mostly dudes. It is what it is. But that said, over the years, and we're going to turn back the clock a little, and we'll look at some of the, some of the creators that now that you can go check out their stuff. But um, going back to the 40s and 50s, um, th- if you go back and look in the history books to see all the people created, Superman, Batman, Captain America, dudes... But there are a lot of there are a lot of stories and there are a lot of things that um, there are a lot of there are a lot of things that went uncredited. Uh, um, for example, Wonder Woman. William Wilden Marston. Yes, has he, he, <laughs> that's, his name. that's his name. No, no, I just yeah. I want to point to you and have you yeah. give me facts. Um, he um, he was known for creating and writing a lot of the Wonder Woman, the very, the very bondagey well, sexual in the Wonder Woman. Yeah, he was. And and actually, it's speculated and believed that a lot of the Wonder Woman stories were actually. He had help, or were just flat out written by his wife and her female lover. <gasps> so, Sovereign Savo. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, she was the model. The, the, yeah. the girlfriend was the model for Wonder Woman. She yeah. really looked like Wonder Woman. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I, okay, I wanted to say that, but then I didn't. I but, said, I don't yeah. care. It is kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, sure. Male or female? That's that's just a conceptually. If you yeah. read the his- history books of uh, comics history, like Tencent Plague, I always mention that one because that one's so good. Just go back and read it. Um, there are a lot of mention of women. The the woman, the secretary at EC Comics. She helped out with stories and things like that. So women were active and present. She got um, paid less. Yeah, uh, for, and for example, John... She brought some drinks. She's the Peggy Olsen. Um, <laughs> but for example, John Severin, the great John Severin, his sister uh, Marie pitched in and started coloring and then started drawing herself and went on to have a successful career at Marvel. She drew DC, she drew Marvel, yeah. she, was, she was a good yeah. artist. Um, yeah. Ramona Freyden is... When you think of Ramona Freyden, what do you think? Aquaman. Aquaman. She co-created Metamorpho. Yep. Um, so like, she's, she's the seminal Aquaman artist of the, that period. Yeah, she's which, which is funny because you don't think about that there being yeah. especially in the Silver Age. You, you picture a room full of like sort of dude, hefty men smoking cigars. cigars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and you know she was significant force in in comics yeah. you know that work still survives to the day and is still important and so then as the comics history you know as the clock turned um in the 80s you know some of some of my favorite comics of the 80s were written by women you had you know, we louise simonson uh, x-men stuff x-factor yep. oh, he long run an x-factor among other things she co-created power pack yeah long run yeah. superman books yeah exactly so yeah so louise simonson she was there with death of superman right she was on that team yeah. and this is books, an yeah. example yeah. of yeah. You know, she's a she's a woman, and she's doing stories that are exactly, you know, they're not they're not girl stories. They're just yeah. comic book stories like anybody else's. And and I think I really feel like you saw her name on a comic book, and you judged it for the merits of that of yeah. that comic, not like oh, it's it's like a novelty of a woman. Well, writing no, it. no, for me it was I looked for books written by exactly. Louise Simonson because I knew that she, I knew that the way she wrote I liked. You know, Anna Senti yeah. is another example. Anna Senti, she and she, she and created Daredevil. she she created Typhoid Mary yeah. for Daredevil, and she created Longshot. Yep. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite X Men mm-hmm. characters. Um, is there really any X Men characters not one of my favorites? No. That's a good question. No. Forge. I like the I like Forge a lot. Guido. 
I like Guido a lot. You should not like Guido. Guido's awesome. Anyway, oh. but, um, but re- <laughs> irregardless. Um, not a word. I know. It is a word in the dictionary. Victory. It, it it's redundant. It's, it's, it's a word. It, doesn't change it means the same as regardless. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be in the dictionary. <laughs> irregardless. No, it's still a word. Is this a woman's fault? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. So um, those are some of the women through the history of comics. But now, you know, it's funny because we... There are others. We want to, There are tons of others in the past. And there are tons that are working today. And we want to highlight some of the ones uh, that we think, you know, that, are, that deserve noting, that are good. By no means is are we able to get them all. The list that we had a list that was like this long, yeah, and, and we're also limited by time. So. Really, I want to. This is not a good for a girl list. No, not at this all. This is just no. we want to highlight some of the women working in comic. And in case, you're, in case you're not aware of it, yeah, exactly. We're doing a plus quality work, not tokenizing. Exactly, exactly. Celebrating. Just saying. So um, I want to get that out there. Okay. <laughs> and by no means is this. I was at a liberal arts college. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're just apologizing. Left Upstate and right. New York and no. a white male. I feel so guilty. But we could probably go on for an hour to highlight all the work of women college. We can't do that. So we just kind of will down to the ones that we're the most familiar with, or that we're you know think you know that we're most interested to discuss right now. Um, uh, now I would say that for you, maybe you, yeah. Amanda Connor is. Well, if, if not, well, he's probably one of your favorite artists. Well, the story of I think the Super story talented. of the story of like, all this I think right so now good. is that there's a lot of women in the art side. Yes, yeah. There aren't a lot of women writing books. There's mm-hmm. there's some. Obviously, we'll talk about them. But the mm-hmm. most I think you talk about a lot of artists, colorists yeah. are, are women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Amanda Connor is probably one of the best ones. I think one of the best artists. I was going to say like, she's, she's one of my top artists. five yeah. Yeah. current artists, you know, working at all comics. The first thing I ever saw from her was the Pro with mm-hmm. Garth Ennis, yeah. and which was. A little edgy, but uh, and, that, and but I was like I was like wow I really like this and this then great. I have yet to see an Amanda Connor drawing book anything that has not fan- been fantastic. She straddles that line between cartoony and that's real. what I was going to yeah. say, and I really like that yep. style because it, it just sort of has a little bit of everything in it mm-hmm. where you can you can do action and you can do acting, but also great acting. Can, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the expressions and all, yeah. all the the green arrow, black canary wedding issue. Yeah. Oh, that was good. The comedy, yeah. action, like yeah, it's so a good. slightly. I don't want to say cleaner. It is cleaner than like what Terry Moore does. It's yeah. in that in the Ch- Cliff Chang wheelhouse where it's yep. car, it's on a, the cartoony side of the spectrum, but it's not. It's a little it's, more it's not dynamic. all the way like yeah. like. Kids comic style. It's, yeah, it's, in the I feel it's, it's like a little more dynamic. Amanda, yeah. Yeah. Amanda Connor, she'll draw a character winking at the camera, and I feel it I, uh-huh. winking at me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it like it, it jumps There's the page. Life There's art. so much life. So if you wanted to recommend the 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 one thing that somebody needs to read of Amanda Connor, is it that Power it's Girl? The run? Power Girl run. I think yeah. that's the, the best art she's done. It's yeah. the most recent. She's you know mm-hmm. she, as all artists do, get better as they go. And yeah. So the most real recent Power Girl. Yeah. Art. There's two trades of it. So yes, yeah, so check that out for Amanda Connor. Um, one uh, uh, one other creator who's made a big name for on the Vertigo side of things, Jill Thompson. Jill uh, Thompson is she's been uh, I don't know, she's been around for a long time. Yep. And 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 she's she worked did, they just re-released finals which was yeah. I remember when that came out from Vertigo when we were in college uh-huh. like 10 a well, long time ago. Yeah, 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 long yeah, time exactly. ago. Um, and, and, and I remember I'm like oh this is great. she's very uh, painted style, yeah. really painted good. watercolor yeah. style. She actually brings a lot of I think a lot more fine art yeah, uh, work to if you look at her sketch blogs and watch what she does, she does a lot of just watercolors of you know still lifes and, yeah. and nature scenes and things like that. So she's bringing a, a style to comics that that we don't see a lot because yeah. of, you know sort of just normal line drawn stuff. But she can do that. Like she just yeah. did Beast of Burden with Evan Dorkin, over which it. is I was going to write Eisner Award nominated yeah. winning and like just fa- no, fantastic. You can go back and she's done Hard stories. Winning. She's yeah. done stories with Neil Gaiman in Sandman in the, in the series proper, and then she did spin off. Uh, Endless story. She's done little endless, which are like yeah. little cute versions of of the endless. And, and really, I think her biggest hit is the Scary Godmother. Like that's been yeah. like, that that's that's kind of showcases her talent, mm-hmm. and and that's she's the sole creator of that. Yeah, and, yeah. So um, great, great. I mean, great to, un, unlike anybody out there. Also, for like, one of the stuff. like she's one of the creators that you can follow on Twitter, and she's like endlessly energetic. Yeah, and she's like, all, like, yeah. like like makes you enjoy the creative side of that whole thing. Yeah, very cool. Um, um, but you were talking how we're talking about a lot of artists here, but probably one of the most prolific writers of the past at least five years has been Gail Simone over at DC Comics. Um, she's written everything from from the Titans books to the Birds of Prey to Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. She's writing Batgirl right now. She's yeah. stuck. She's in the Batman world a lot. She's, she's very in the bat side. But I, I mean, one of the I've that comes from her own interest. Though, yeah, no, I, yeah. which is fine. I've never seen such devo- devotion in a droid. In a droid, <laughs> I've never seen such devotion in fans. <laughs> That's exactly where my head went. Um, for the fans of Secret Six, Secret Six, yeah. 
Deadpool for a long time. She did Deadpool at Marvel for a while. And Welcome to Tranquility, which was awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did. I really liked Welcome to Tranquility. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. But, um, so she, I mean, she's, she's a machine. I mean, she just cranks it out and she, and uh, again, another creator who you follow on Twitter, very active. Uh, The one thing about her I I think is great is that at the cons, she's always signing. Like, she makes so much time for her fans and, like, it's totally, like, she's, like, a, such a fan friendly creator. Um, you really can't go wrong with that. Good sense so. of humor. Yeah. Very actually, some one of the few people who actually brings humor into comics. That doesn't yeah. happen yeah. much at all. It's happening a little more now. But well, I think comics are serious business. I, I, I know. I know. Uh, so speaking of, of Gail Simone, I think another one of the really big names uh, in comics art, period, man or woman, is Nicola Scott. Yep. You know, she worked with Gail on Birds of Prey and then on um, Wonder Woman. Yep. She's, and she, she's, she's, and she's on Secret Six, and yep. she's in Teen Titans with J.T. Kroll. And I think she was one of the names that people brought about when DC first announced their books, and she wasn't on a book. And it wasn't just because she was a woman. I think it's because she's so good yeah. mm-hmm. that people were like, wait, well, you you have this great artist. Why isn't she on one of your books? Which right. apparently she's got a book coming out, but she's fantastic. Right. So, um, yeah, no, she's not going anywhere. She's 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 definitely a, uh, a force to be reckoned with. She's sure. like a man of Connor net in that she draws characters with a lot of personality to them. Yeah. They all look different. A lot of people have that face, that mm-hmm. standard face. Everybody has the same face. So she's yeah. got those different people. She's like, she does team books really well because all the faces look different. Yeah, I remember when I first saw her stuff, I was like, oh, she's yeah. like, she did, that felt the, the agent. She's got something, some yeah. magic. But, um, you, you had a cigar? You're like, yeah. <laughs> Who's representing you, kid? <laughs> Another another uh, artist that's been around for a while and has built up a pretty a great a pretty good uh, respectable library of work is Becky Cloonan. Mm-hmm. You've um, been a big fan for I've been, a long time. From the, I big think, fan. Yeah, I think from the first issue of Demo with Brian Wood uh, back in the early two thousands, I, I was like, wow, she's like she's good. Um, different styles. Well, that was totally yeah. impressive about it. Yeah, she's able to change her style. She's done a lot of work on the manga side of things. Um, so she's got, what is lot- that? Right, so she's got a lot of work, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of practice in terms of doing a lot of volume and. You draw that backwards. Stuff. Yeah, nice. Um, but uh, I'm left-handed. <laughs> what, what I think is great about Becky Clinton is that she she like because she can change style and because she can like she surprises you. Like yeah. the, the stuff she did in Northlanders was yeah, it's was true. beautiful. It was great. And you can't you don't know what you're going to get. You get yeah. Becky Clinton's book, and that's not a bad thing. It's like what kind of style is she going to bring that's appropriate to the story, right? And the girl's obsessed with comics. I mean, like they, she she did, works with Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. They do those little they they do those little uh, kind of anthology books they have for sale at cons and things like that. If you're ever at a convention, go pick those up because they're awesome and amazing. How, how much are you looking forward to Doom? Oh yeah, she's doing a Doom mini, a like, Teen Doom <laughs> with Nick Spencer. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be really, really good. Yeah, Boom. yeah. So, um, so Becky Cloonan's another one of my favorites. Um, but what's interesting is that we're talking about artists and writers. Interesting. There's a, some of the best colorists in comics are also women. Um, we've talked about it previously on the Mike. Yeah, Al- I see better. It's in the genes. Um, we've, on the Mike Allred, <laughs> we spotlighted Mike Allred's art, and we mentioned how Mike Allred is almost like a huge part of his art is the coloring by his wife Laura Allred. Mm-hmm. She's one of the best colorists I've seen. Best use of palette. She knows how to 
they like they work together. Really. Yeah, they just have a great she, symbiosis. Well, she, and she's colored other people. Yeah, and, and it, it's, yeah, it's just as good. Um, and then surprisingly enough, the, the Laura's and colorists seem to work. But Laura Martin. I think has she's been for the last ten years. She's like the, yeah. the uh, next to Dave Stewart. I'd say probably the preeminent name, especially in sort of those big. She was event like the, she was like the first sort of famous colorist. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, you, they started putting her name on the cover of books. Right. You, I mean, I remember first it was on Authority and yeah, stuff like that, which was Laura, before she got married. She was Laura. Stuff. She was Laura Depoy. Yeah. Depoy. And then um, and then she went to Cross Gen, and then has been mainly at Marvel, and then she went Marvel exclusive recently. Um, but I remember her coloring Cassidy his work on Astonishing X-Men and well, that I remember, stuff was just oh, I remember stuff. Warren Ellis insisting yeah. to put her name on the book because she yeah. was as important it was on Ministry of Space right yeah. yeah that's what it was yeah. and that was because she was around when coloring became a big you know not just red blue it became yeah. like actual you know painting you have have yeah. color theory and know how um, to do it yeah. correctly I think the single best colorist in the business right now is Betty Brightweiser wow I think I think that's true I am very inclined to agree with you again short I'd say short of Dave Stewart yeah um, but she every th- lately Almost every time that I look at a book, I'm like, this coloring is fantastic. Betty Brightweiser. Yeah. I mean, really wonderful stuff. The work that she did with Gabe Hardman and the work that she's doing over in, uh, is Captain America? Mm-hmm. I think, with Somni. Mm-hmm. Uh, wonderful sense of not too much. Yeah. You know, just... It's the anti-Marvel style. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And yeah. for such a long time, there was that over-rendered faux painting too thing dark, that was happening. Yeah. And her... Matthew Wilson's another one. She was desaturated. Same yeah. lines to yeah. just... Tone it down and, and go with the colors that all work together. And yeah. uh, oh, she, I mean, like when she works in a comic book, it's better for her. Oh, than right. Her. And then I had the same reaction a few years ago when I saw Christina Strain. She was one of the, like, the thing is, like, you read a comic and sometimes you, the coloring, you just, you, you almost, you notice bad coloring, and, you know, and, but there are times where you look at the really good color, like, mm-hmm. who's coloring this? Yeah. And Christina Strain was one of those people who was using such bright colors and energy and like making the drawings kind of come to life through the colors um, and Christina Strain is actually going on to become a full on creator like she's doing more than just coloring she's drawing and th- things like that so um, but interesting to see the little colorist kind of corner of of, of the tiny colorist yeah now um, we're talking about some of the t- the newer artists people yeah. coming along I, Sarah Pacelli on Ultimate Spider-Man she's gonna be a star she might be already she's not, almost. Yeah, not, not yet. She's, she's gonna be in a year from now. She's gonna be a star. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Oh. She's re- and, and and I say that like you're in a context of her coming on to Ultimate Spider-Man yeah. from going from Mark Bagley to Stuart Eminem to David LaFuente to to her, yep. and they're all they were all different. I loved every one of them for a different reason, you know. And, and she she hu- she held on with those guys right from out of nowhere. I don't. I, she's from Italy, I guess, but I'd never seen. She's her been one of those else. people that Marvel's she's had. Italy. She's Marvel's had in the state, like the state, in, in their back, in like right. the, one of these their artists. Pocket. Yeah, that. <laughs> thank you. That um and the fact that they're now giving her a stage to kind of you know become mm-hmm. huge on is great. We ran on ifanboy.com, We ran a video of her drawing the new Ultimate Spider-Man, and it just. I mean, it's just great. It's like magic happening in front of you. Mm-hmm. It's just like she's she's gonna be huge. So she's yeah. great. It's a really um, good style. Uh, another great artist is uh, up and coming is uh, Nikki Cook, who did Memoir with Ben McCool at Image. Um, in the same kind of Becky Cloonan kind of school. Yep, um, uh, but I imagine we're going to hear a lot from Nikki Cook uh, coming up. Uh, Marion Churchland is another one. She won, the, she won the Russ Manning Newcomer Award last year. She did a lot of stuff on Elephant Man, Elephant Man, and she did that graphic novel Beast, which was beautiful. She's got a very delicate kind of look and style mm-hmm. that's really good. Um, also an image, um, Emmy Lennox, who did, she, they, they published her online webcomic, her web diary, Emmy Town, and I bet you can see a lot of stuff coming from her, coming up, uh, from especially from Image, probably with, you know, kind of creator own kind of mm-hmm. stuff with her kind of cartooning um, and Kate Beaton is I don't know if you guys even caught it at San Diego but like the book that was sold out the first day mm-hmm. was Hark of uh, a Vagrant like yeah. the, the collected edition of that and she just won an Harvey she won an Harvey Award yeah, yeah so uh, she's and Kate, great she's really good she, uh, the, she's got uh, Seth Clout yeah, it's <laughs> It's some of the whole Great Gatsby's of yeah. uh, the Lois Lane stuff she did. Yeah, oh, cool. that stuff was great. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, there are a lot. There are a lot of really good women working in the industry. It's really cool to see. And it's and it's. I feel you know. like it's a pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, I guess Fiona Staples is another one. Yep. Or, yeah. I mean, or we, I mean, we Jenny Frizan or. Like, oh, Jenny Frizan is she's her covers yeah. are great. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, just amazing stuff. Uh, there's tons. I mean, I could sit. I'm not gonna sit here and list women. Who we can just write off names at this point. Yeah, but, but but it's a significant presence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think. Especially on the art side. There really is yeah. a lot of yeah. that in the art. I think the problem becomes when there's not a lot of people writing. 
the books, and yeah. that's where the disparity is. But well, but then you have people like G. Willow Wilson, mm-hmm. and yeah, no, but no, you're right. It is, it, there is there they are few and far. Amy Reader Had, Had, Hadley. There's a, ton, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot of women in editorial. There's a lot. Yeah, there are that you yeah. sort of don't hear about, but yeah. uh, behind the scenes, there's a lot. No, yeah. I, I don't want. Like, I don't want. We don't want to get to the point where we're just like listing women who work in comics. But the point enough, is, it's it's a significant presence. There is one category that we couldn't find any women. Letters. What's up with that, letters? I'm just saying. Talk about you want to look for your sexism in comics? Lettering. Those men have a stranglehold yeah, on it. Yeah. They're like, I don't know. So if you know There's any. There's no work for you. If you know any female letterers that it's we don't know about. Jeez, you're going to give them a complex. <laughs> but if you, if you know any female letters or any other great female creators that you want to share with everybody else, go to fanboy.com. We have a whole post of this episode. Uh, you know, help us uh, kind of highlight some of the great uh, female creators that are out there. Uh, our email is contact at ifanboy.com and our voicemail is 888-FANBOY-326-2697. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ifanboy or go over to the Facebook and gossip at facebook.com slash ifanboy. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we didn't get in trouble. <laughs> we probably Please. did. We probably said something wrong. I know. Uh. <laughs>